Rub up your engines! Okay, today I have a 2014 RAV4 second owner, and I'm gonna talk about a tune-up and maintenance. And just realize, there's really no such thing as a tune-up these days. You gotta go way back in time when cars actually needed tune-ups. Even this 94 Salka didn't need a tune-up. It's got electronic ignition, fuel injection, there's no carburetor to adjust and tune. But that doesn't mean you just leave your car alone. Take this 2014 RAV4. 116,000 miles. And it's presently running fine, but the owner understands. You gotta maintain a car. Now, she does her own oil changes. That's the main thing on a Toyota. But there are other things that came with no maintenance records, so she doesn't know the history. And it's running fine, but let's say yours isn't running fine, and you think a, in quotes, tune-up will fix it. The first thing you do with any cars, hook up a scan tool, because you could do a tune-up, spark plugs, air filter, fuel filter, all kinds of stuff. If the sensor's bad, it's still gonna run bad. So always start with a scan. Doesn't matter what kind of tool you're using, they all give you pretty good codes. And it's so easy to do. Just turn the key on so the idiot lights are on and the car isn't running. Then go to the data port and plug it in. The card reader starts working right then. Everything's green here. There's no powertrain codes or anything. Since this is a decent scan tool, I'm going to do a bit more than that. I'm going to do system status. And as you can see, I can do an all module scan, which really gives you an idea. It behooves a mechanic working on your car to do this. You can see this takes less than two minutes. And in that two minutes, I can learn an awful lot. I knew a mechanic in Chicago. This was over 40 years ago. And even 40 years ago in Chicago, when you took your car into an accredited repair shop in the city of Chicago, they had to do this. You had to pay for it, but they had to do it and tell the customer everything that was wrong with the car. They made a law for that. But you can see, it's pretty fast. No codes on any of these things. Everything's zero so far. Aha. Uh -huh. And we found a few things. We care about some of them. The engine, there's three we care. The main body, we'll look at that too. Navigation system, who cares? Everybody has phones these days. And the tire pressure monitoring system doesn't work anymore. And that's mainly because it's nine years old. The batteries are dead on most of the sensors. She didn't care about that. What we're gonna care about is two things. The main body, we'll see what that code is. Tire pressure warning communication. So, that's the same as the stupid TPMS system that we know isn't working. We don't care about that. Keep scrolling up. What do we have? Engine and ECT. Now that might mean something. It's got EVAP emissions control incorrect purge flow. These often do that. That's code one. Code two is there's a gross leak on the system. Okay. And code three is a startability malfunction. Toyota's often tripped the startability just because the battery is a little bit weak or it was really cold outside. That I'm not worried about. I'll test the battery tell she needs a new one. But the other ones are emissions codes, EVAP codes for the EVAP system. Sometimes it's obvious. We'll look at the obvious things first. Now the EVAP system, it's part of getting rid of gasoline vapors and not venting them in the atmosphere. Sometimes it's as simple as a bad gas cap. As we look at this one, it's the original gas cap. It's still got the little hanger on it. I'd say the whole thing is a bad gas cap. Now, a bad gas cap won't keep your car from starting running, okay? The only thing is you can't meet the emission standards when it's time to get your car inspected, so you could change the gas cap. This is Clarksville, Tennessee. They don't emission test cars, so nobody cares about that. But it is a Toyota, and notoriously, when people change the air filter, they often knock some of these hoses off. So we're gonna look at all the hoses and look closely with a strong flashlight to make sure none of the hoses have come off. These hoses back here will often come off, but no, nah, they're all plugged in. I don't see anything missing. You shake them, they're not loose or anything. These are all on. So, that's probably just a gas cap. We'll get another gas cap anyways later on, but she wants me to maintain it. She did get spark plugs. Spark plugs wear out over time. They may be the original ones, so she bought a set, let's put them in. Now take the stupid beauty cover off. Take the coils off. Oh, we got a 10 millimeter socket. And of course, we don't want to lose the stupid parts, so my advice, put them on a safe place. Like the cowling here and they can't go anywhere. We'll wiggle it and pull it out. And we got a 5 8 magnetic socket so it doesn't fall when you take it out. And pull out the first spark plug. They're hard beginning, but then they twirl once you get them going. They have relatively long threads. Out we go. See where the magnet sticks in good. 
won't fall out. So let's examine the sparkle because you can see it's worn, it seems to me to be the original one. And it's got a little speckling on it, which is normal when they get this old. It's not black from running too rich. You always get a little bit of buildup for impurities in the fuel, but it's time to change it for sure. Now these are iridium spark plugs, so we're replacing with iridium spark plugs. They last the longest. Why mess around? You pay a few bucks more. If it lasts 116,000 miles and still running good, who cares about spending a few extra bucks? And when you're gonna put them in, notice, this is all already plated. Do not put any type of NIC stuff. This keeps them from season. It's already plated. You put NIC stuff, they won't be in there right, and they can actually screw themselves out from slipping. Leave these alone, just put them in naked. Easy enough to do. See, it doesn't fall. You don't want it falling. If it falls, it can crunch the top and make it too short. You don't want it falling in. That's why you get the magnetic ones like I do. First, you put them in finger tight. Then put your ratchet on it. Turn it till it's snug. Okay, it's snug. Now turn it maybe 15, 20 degrees more. That's plenty tight enough. Now, if you're a fanatic or an amateur, you can get a torque wrench, do the correct torque wrench settings. I've been doing this a long time with something like that. I know it by feel. If you don't, get a torque wrench. Set the torque wrench at 18 pound feet of torque and torque them down if you want to do that. And of course, we got to do all four. You got to have them even. Take out the. 10 millimeter bolt, wiggle it a little. Now this one won't come out because the wiring loom is too short. So you gotta squeeze this and pull it off, which is almost impossible with fingers. Get a little pair of pliers. The pliers will squeeze it. Uh, then it pops off, makes it easier. And then you can compare spark plugs to see if the engine is worn unevenly. But in this case, it looks pretty much just like the other spark plugs. Some are black and some are white. Means that the black one's running rich. Or if they're all black, means the whole system's running rich. I don't expect anything of this because there are no codes. But you want to look at them anyway. Now, as we can see, number three is worn pretty much the same. Same color as the other. They're all even so far. Then we'll take out the last one. Guess I'm getting old. I can't do that one with my bare fingers. As we look at the last one, it's about the same too. They're all worn evenly. They're worn out. They're old. They've been in there 116,000 miles. So it's time to change. And also realize that these iridium spark plugs come pre-gapped. Do not re-gap them. If they've been bent or something, take them back and get another one. They're not made to be re-gapped. You can easily damage that thin little iridium wire that's in there. Then of course, put all the coil on plugs back in their hole. Plug them until they click. Get here, click, and bolt each one down. First, just do it finger tight. Then, it's tight now. A little bit more, that's it. Then start looking at everything. You wouldn't believe how many times I got in cars that didn't run bad. The only thing wrong was the air filter was dirty. Here's the air filter. Here's a good test. There's the blazing sun. Let's stick this in. You can't see the blazing sun through it, so it's time for a new air filter. So I'll get a new air filter as long as that, we'll get another gas cap too. So I'll put the new air filter in, as you can see. When you look into the sun with this one, look. You can actually see through it. <laughs> it's not blocking the sun, because it's a clean filter. So we'll put the filter in. Fit right in. You gotta make sure that they line up good. Then that snaps in place. Nice and tight. As I said previously, make sure you didn't knock any of these vacuum lines off. And speaking of leaks, we'll pop the gas, put it in a new gas cap. They just screw on. You turn till they click. Now I've erased all the codes, so we'll take it for a little ride, see if any of them come back. It's a typical Ram 4. It shifts fine. You step on it. It's got enough power. Then it shifts back nice and quiet. You're pretty high up in the air, but even with that, it handles decently. I mean, not the greatest handling vehicle. It's a little SUV after all. It still rides good with the original shocks and struts on it. Not being a super heavy vehicle, these things wear things out a lot slower than a big giant SUV. Plus they get a lot better gas mileage than a big giant SUV. Now she drives it around in eco mode all the time. So I'll just leave it on eco. Now it's a little rattly when you hit bumps. These RAV4s aren't the quietest vehicles, especially these ones that are a few years old. They do tend to rattle the plastic stuff, but I mean it runs perfectly fine. As we come to a stop, doesn't shake. A little bitty four cylinder engine with mileage on it, but idles fine. And now just for kicks, we'll rehook up the scan tool. 
with the key on engine not running there's no power train codes or anything but it was like that before so we did before we'll go to the full system scan all module scan and we'll scan it and we're off to the races now, i certainly don't expect everything to have gone away because we didn't work on the tire pressure monitoring system that's got problems could cost a thousand dollars or more to change all the sensors and the control unit looks like it's got problems real expensive air pressure gauge that's cheap but let's see what happened with the evap code that would cause it to fail emissions if you do emissions testing in your area right, here we go the all module scans done so zero 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 there's one here, the main body. And what does that say? Tire pressure warning system. We know that's a problem, so we don't care. So we'll keep going. Navigation system. We knew the navigation system didn't work before. We didn't work on it. Who cares? These navigation systems on cars are crap. Your phone does a much better job. It updates itself. You're already paying for your phone. So why pay extra for a crappy Toyota system that you got to update? And it doesn't work that well. So we don't care about that either. But we'll continue on. The only other code is tire pressure monitoring and we know it's got problems. So we actually fixed the EVAP system leak, large leak. You say large leaks out of the gas cap, replace the gas cap, that fixed that. So if you lived in an area where they inspect cars, you would pass the emissions test. Here in Clarksville, nobody cares, but if you're someplace else, that gas cap would have fixed that problem. So what have you learned today? Well, even though cars don't need tune-ups anymore, there's things that you can easily do yourself every once in a while to maintain your car correctly. Air filters, spark plugs, and in this case, it had an EVAP system leak. We fixed it by replacing the gas cap. There are things you can do yourself, and if you have a scanner, if you don't, go get at least a cheap scanner, because then you can see if there's any problems before you work on the car, so then you'll know that if you fix them, and after you road test them, the machine will say, did you fix that problem? Or did you not fix the problem? It's pretty cut and dry. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.